Hi there, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how to make a round watercolor block. I've been seeing these online, uh, people sharing cute paintings done on round watercolor blocks on Instagram, but I can't find these to buy anywhere. I can order them online, but like a six inch block is like 40 or 50 dollars, so it's kind of crazy. So I decided I would make my own since I did successfully make some watercolor blocks before, and I will link that tutorial in the video description. So what I've done is I've taken my largest circle die, which is about four and a half inches wide, and I have cut a bunch, about 20, um, about 20 circles, and I'm using my B six by nine inch paper. I really like that paper that is um, uh, available very inexpensively on Amazon, and it's a really nice quality. So I will link that up as well. So I have about 20 sheets here, and then I have a piece of cardboard cut to the same size, and I also have a just a scrap of paper cut to the same size that I want to put on top. So I've made a watercolor paper sandwich here. Now what I'm going to do is make sure it's connected really well and it's it's uh, nice and even. I am going to clip it with a binder clip to keep my pages from slipping while I do the gluing. You're going to want something to smooth out your glue. I really like these um, Mod Podge um, tools, silicone tip tools. I'm going to use this one. You probably could just take a, um, like if you had a silicone cupcake wrap or something, put it on your finger, you'd probably do the same thing. Just so, Or, oh, just use a silicone spatula from your kitchen. That would work perfectly. You don't need to get this. That'll be just fine. And you're going to need a hot glue gun with hot glue. So what you're going to do is you are going to put a bead of hot glue, do about four inches, I would say, and you're you're going to hold that with your fingers and you are going to use your spatula to smooth the glue down. Okay, then you're going to move your hand so you're pinching it a little bit further down. Just be careful you don't um, you don't burn yourself. This is not a project for young children. I'm going to slightly overlap what I've done and put another four inches or so of glue. Do less if you feel like it's drying too quickly. I am using high temperature hot glue. Um, I don't think low temperature glue is going to glue uh, thin enough. Now don't worry about the excess because we're going to cover that up. So mostly you just want to make sure you have a very thin coating of glue on the pages on the side. You want just enough to, to kind of trap all those pages in. And then we'll do this last little bit here. I'll actually start it up a little bit closer to the clip and I'll work it back. All right, nice and neat. Okay, so you're going to let that dry. Now, while that's drying, we're going to die cut our cover. Of course, you can cut all this by hand. You could trace a circle, cut it out by hand, or use some other type of cutter. I use my die cut machine because I had one, but you don't have to have one. So I'm just going to grab my Big Shot machine. And what I did was I took a piece of this cardstock weight pattern paper, and um, I just kind of folded it in half. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a circle. Now, this isn't quite big enough for me to you know, um, get a full cover on each side, but it doesn't really matter. We only need the full cover on the top. So what I've done is I've folded it in half and I'm going to put this on my die cut machine. Okay. Now this is a, this cuts by pressure. When I roll it through here, it's going to uh, put pressure on the die and cut these, the, uh, circle here. And I am going to put my next cutting plate down, which applies the pressure, but I'm not going to have it cut all the way through. I'm leaving like um, probably about a, a quarter of an inch between the edge of the blade and the end of that uh, that pad there. I'm going to crank it through. It probably It's not going to make sense until I do it, so I'm sorry. It probably seems a little crazy. And you can make your cover however you want. I just think this makes a really nice and neat um, effect because I have the dies already. So what I have here is kind of like a partial cover. You see that? Now what I'm going to do is use scissors to just cut between the front and the back cover. So the back cover is just going to be like half a cover, but that's fine because you really don't need more than that. You could, you know, fill in the gaps with some washi tape if you want to, but it's not really necessary. You basically want a, just a little area for a spine. So now I'm going to take the clip off of my thing there. And this will go around, go on the top, just keep the, that top page clean. And then we can fold, make a couple little folds here on our spine area. So we'll have something to glue. And I also grabbed a little piece of ribbon, which I forgot to do on my prototype, which I'll show you in a second, because uh, I thought it would be nice to have a little ribbon that we could actually, um, you know, tie our, our thing closed with if we wanted to. So. 
I'm going to put a little bead of glue right along the center there. Or as close to the center as I'm going to get. I'm not very precise. And when you don't stick your finger in that glue, because that's going to be hot, just kind of pull it up, pull the ribbon out to the edge, just like that. Most of the time in this project is honestly die cutting. Okay, so I'm going to pay attention to where I have my opening. I want my opening against that spine. And I am going to put glue on this side of my cover. You don't have to put a ton, it'll stay. And I'm just going to line, oops, I got a glue gob there. I am going to line that up so that I have the cardboard side down. So that card, that's, that's the bottom. Like if I want to put a little washi tape on there, I totally could. It would be really cute. And there, this will be our little block. And we would close it like this. And you could decorate it however you want, if you wanted to. You could put even like a little, uh, you could put like a little piece of watercolor paper on the front if you want to paint on it, or you can make your cover with watercolor paper. I just wanted to use up something that I already had. Now this was my prototype, and I just want to show you how you remove a page, and I'm going to take my top page off here just so you can see. What you do is you take a, um, like a palette knife or a butter knife, and you just slide it between your layers. And the reason I put a piece of um, scrapbook paper or scrap paper on top is because I want to protect the uh, top sheet from getting any glue on it because it can get a that you know your glue can get a little messy on that top sheet so I just want to protect that paper and now we have that cute block to paint on and then when you're ready to remove that sheet you just slide your uh, your knife in there between the next two sheets and you can slide it off that way so it's just kind of a fun little uh, block you can make sometimes painting in a different size just gives you a different perspective and um, I think that's a really awesome idea and um, I think they'd be really cute gifts to make as well so there you have it thank you so much for watching please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this tutorial and let me know in the comments below if you've ever painted round paintings before I'd love to know because hey I'm looking for some ideas. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.